Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Gamey Daddy channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today I'm going to be talking about builds. I'm going to be talking about something that's really critical about builds in the Division 2 that is, you know, sometimes seems to be forgotten as to why we say there's a lot of variety within the game. Now, this is something that will, you know, in a sense, I would say go further and deeper into some of the build philosophies in this game that aren't necessarily always highlighted or celebrated. So I was playing this legendary yesterday and it was actually a very fun one. There were a lot of uh, people in the group that really knew what they were doing. So we had a lot of red builds in there. I went in there with my merciless build. Yes, I wanted to run the merciless. I was like, I'm running this weapon regardless of what anybody says. And I'll show you that build if you want to see it in another video. So we went in there and we kind of did a very good job. The legendary mission probably took somewhere around 35 minutes. The raw footage is about 50 or 48 minutes, but that's because we had a lot of downtime. In fact, there was a time where we had to literally wait for one of our group members for like three minutes. And then somewhere in between the mission, uh, like after we finished the first phase, he disconnected. And so we were matchmaking for a good amount of time. So that really did take a bunch of our time when it came to the you know entirety of the mission. But ideally, as we ran through this mission, we were doing such a good job. I mean, people were melting. Uh, you know, we were destroying all of the enemy NPCs. It was just almost too easy, if you ask me, the way the legendary mission ran. And I was really excited. And I got to take a look at everybody's build. Everybody was running a very, very red build for the most part. In fact, if <laughs> I haven't been in a legendary team like this in a while. But this is on PC. Uh, there are different cultures in the way that we play. I know PlayStation. I have my own reservations as to how I play on PlayStation. I would not go in a legendary random match made mission on PlayStation with this build. I almost always go with a support build or a tank build because for some reason it appears somebody gets careless and we have to, you know, mitigate and make sure like the team doesn't die. It's just, it's just a thing. I don't know why. Maybe it's my luck. Uh, that's something of that nature. Now, this also ties into a conversation I was having with one of my longtime audience members. And, you know, we were talking about how, you know, build diversity is kind of rare with uh, a lot of the, well, with the damage, weapon damage build patterns. And I said, well, you know, I kind of disagree with that because I felt that, you know, there was a little bit of nuance within the different builds that something, uh, you know, comes into play with the way, you know, you're going to build in a team. And I think the division is the game that really really is more heavy handedly uh, favorable to people who build with their teams in mind uh, and rather than people who build, uh, you know, for themselves or, you know, to 100 percent enjoy their play style. I think if you want to kind of enjoy your build in the division, you have to sacrifice a little bit of your own um I would say enjoyment in order for your team to be able to kind of like gain from you. Now, what do I mean? So, like I said, we were running in this mission and everybody was basically running the sharpshooter specialization, high damage builds. I mean, I think, you know, at some point somebody was running a technician or something. Uh, one of our team members I, that joined us was running a hardwired build or something. So that was it. But three of us were running damage builds, me with my merciless and all of the above. And it was a fun mission. We were plowing through the content without any issues. Everybody was running for themselves. But here's the thing. You see, with le the mission designs in the division, the level designs are designed uh, or specifically set up to actually challenge the team. Yes, enemy NPCs run all over the place. Uh, you know, they have a specific number of health. There's things you can do to reduce their health. High damage. You know, we had this one marksman rifle that was basically one tapping almost everybody uh, in the team. And yes, that really did work for us. But the moment we approached one of the very challenging levels, which is the garage levels, as we were about to enter this level, for some strange reason, I had this inkling that I needed to change my build. I was like, man, this mission is going way too fluid. Let me change my build because I have a feeling that if I don't, we may not survive. And that's the thing. You really do have to think about the different aspects of your build. And so as we got in here, I swapped to a build that I got from a YouTuber named I am Fox. Now, I'm not going to show you the build here. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward it because I want for you to go to his channel. I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can go check out his build. There is something quite unique about 
the way he talks about his build. And I saw, man, we do share a few philosophies as to why these things are important. And that's team synergy. I'm going to go ahead and skip past where I, uh, you know, swap to the build so that you guys can actually see. Uh, no, no, don't look at the build. No, don't look at it. There we go. <laughs> I went ahead and switched out to this build and the build is a tank build and the build pretty much was able to get the job done. And it's a very interesting take on the tank build. And he used uh, the demolition specialization. Now, you guys know from the, you know, the moment the tank builds became viable in the division, I pretty much have been a fan. I've, I've said to myself, man, I would love to run tank builds every time I have to have one in my back pocket and all of the above. And I do have a bunch of different ones that I use. I've shown you guys my Foundry Bulwark setup after I got my Foundry Bulwark chest piece and backpack on the PlayStation 5. I was super stoked. But then I've never really run Foundry Bulwark like this in my life where I use the demolitionist specialization. And this was something that's inspired by another YouTuber. So why would I be bothering using this specialization when I basically skip over technician? I basically skip over firewall. These have their implications when you're running a tank build, right? And so here is the idea. There are a few things that a demolitionist, uh, you know, uh, does. Yes, it, it, it increases your burn resistance. Awesome. Uh, but then here are a few things that makes legendary very interesting when you're running this particular specialization. Your group members are gaining 5% damage to targets out of cover. You need to go check out that build and look at the pieces. I'm going to scrub it away from this video. I accidentally put it in there, but I'm scrubbing it away. So I want you guys to go there and check it out. And... You know, you can ignore explosions. This can trigger once every 60 seconds. Do you know how many explosions you eat when you're playing an average legendary missions? I mean, at any point, except you're hiding in a little corner, you will attract explosions because they're grenadiers. They are the shotgunners that use their drones. Uh, I mean, there are all kinds of crazy things that are going to be launched at you. And then there are also those little, um, I would say, silly drones that roll and they lob grenades. They're the warhounds as well. And so when you think about the amount of explosions that you're going to be eating, it's definitely useful. Now, yes, I do have another build that I did set up that uses the Sawyer's knee pads. And because of the explosive resistance, I went ahead and rolled explosive resistance on all my different, uh, you know, uh, pieces. But then I thought about, you know, I wouldn't I would not need to do that. I could roll critical hit chance or headshot damage, you know, or armor regen on those pieces if I were to just run the demolition and specialization. So shout out to Iron Fox for actually pointing this out. This is something that I knew, but not something that I applied in my build. So the way we think about our builds in the division two is actually very important and very interesting. You know, there, one build can take many different facets. And yes, I think one of the things that, you know, brings the frustration, and this is, you know, for, the, you know, pertaining to the discussion that I had with my audience member is, you know, the red builds sometimes can seem very similar. You got to run 60% crit chance, and then you got to stack up as much crit damage as you want. But if you were to go back to the Division 1 and how the game is structured with gun builds, this has always been the pattern for the most part. You couldn't necessarily run a lot of your builds uh, way too differently. Now, the one thing that really did stand out, though, was specific builds had the requirement for you to have more stamina, like Predator's Mark. Predator's Mark was predicated on you having a high stamina build. Strikers, on the other hand, you have to run it a specific way for strikers. Sentry, you have to run a specific way to leverage all of the sentry buffs. So those builds were, you know, at the end of the game anyways, the end of life, were a little bit more cookie cutter. Now, I also get with the Division 1, we had a little bit of this, uh, you know, tic-tac that you could do where you could make your builds very hybrid. There were the, the minor and the, you know, major attributes and all of the above. And yes, you can make all those things, you know, work or make them synergize for you, but you had to do a lot of farming. And I think that's where the game kind of lost a lot of us when it came to, uh, you know, having to put all these attributes together. In the Division 2, on the other hand, the specialization trees have pretty much taken the place of a lot of those different buffs that you could get uh, and a lot of those things that you could leverage. And am I saying it was done in the very best way? No, but at least it was done in a much more realistic way and in a way that I think the entirety of the community could, you know, get, get around simplifying things as well. But in that simple simplification, there are little things that make for a solid gameplay experience. And I'm telling you folks that 
if you were to maybe be doubting the, you know, I would say the availability of build diversity, I think it's about just looking more into how you as a player can get your team to be very strong. Now, here's the caveat. When it comes to solo play, that's where I think a lot of things are a little bit different. As a solo player, you have to do a lot for yourself. And honestly, if you want to run a damage build as a solo player, you know, it's really interesting how you're going to do that. I mean, you want to run a damage build, right? Well, do you want to run with the uh, the specialization that does a sharpshooter that gives you, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, sharpshooter is not, probably, not something you're going to use unless you're using a rifle or marksman rifle. Uh, if you want to run an assault rifle build, you know, do you want to use survivalist so that you can have that, um, you know, healing that actually is automated if you use the seeker mind. If you look at the survivalist specialization, you have your seeker mind that heals you and it just follows you around it's really easy it does you don't have to think about healing uh you know and, and again if you do cover to cover you're going to be able to get um you know your ammo per second five ammo per second while you're uh for your weapon while you're performing a cover to cover move um you know do you want to use firewall to give you more survivability where if your shield uh, if your armor breaks uh, it says on armor break apply burn to enemies within five meters so you know these are things that you have to think about as uh you know a solo player and there are ways to go around them and it still opens room for a lot of different builds and for a lot of different aspects as a solo player i run for many parts many people won't believe it the imperial dynasty holster is still there folks it's still very good in pvp sorry pve i know pvp players weren't really happy about it uh I, you know i don't play pvp so you know largely my hands are off from that but the game the thing still works very well in pve and i, I don't know it has a 35 second cooldown but still it's something that really keeps enemies away from you it does automated crowd control you don't have to deal with it and pretty much while you're in combat it applies burn to the closest uh, you know uh, enemies that's you know 20 meters from you if you come back again and look at your demolitionist uh, oh sorry if you look at your firewall specialization you have a high burn duration 20 percent burn duration so when you think about all of these things that come into play with the game there are so many options that you know even though some builds may feel generic the little things is what I feel that really matters in setting them apart. And I can, you know, I can also relate to, you know, some of the builds feeling a little boring. But now again, I think the reason we're becoming much more experimental is because, um, you know, the game is now progressing. The content is getting much more familiar. So we're able to try more things out. And so it doesn't seem like we're locked into the paradigms that we were when we first got the Warlords of New York content. Remember when we got Warlords of New York content, everybody was, it has to be either this or that. But now, you know, people can run whatever builds they feel suits them and are able to actually progress, you know, successfully through a lot of the different mission types. But anyways, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think about build diversity right now in the Division 2? Do you think it's actually worth, uh, you know, experimenting and exploring? And I know some people have, you know, basically expressed concern about the pieces that they get. Uh, you know, I, I was talking to somebody this morning and they said, you know, they don't get a lot of really good pieces. And I said, you know, honestly, I don't get a lot of good pieces myself. I'm, on my PlayStation account is where I get a bunch of the good stuff. On my PC account, I don't really get much good stuff. But once in a while, I'll get a nice drop. And they told me specifically. Specifically, they don't get any of the macro grupo stuff and i got this grupo yesterday in that legendary and i just wanted to just say you know it's i think it's about just being a little patient or just making do with what you got because you know in all honesty man some builds you're just gonna have to deal with them being imperfect in terms of terms of their roles uh, like this backpack i have like this chest piece i have you know this is what i play with when i run with my you know uh, my builds i just play with things that i have because i believe eventually if i get the item that i need i get it if not I continue to just blow through the content because the, the percentage differences, yes, they can stack up to being significant. But again, I played the Division 1 where the RNG was just brutal. I don't think I ever min-maxed a complete build in my entire play of that game. But in Division 2, I have builds that are basically min-maxed uh, as, as it stands. And I haven't even played the Division 2 as much as I played the Division 1 yet. So, you know, I think that perspective also comes into play. But again, I guess I can say I do feel that aspect of things. And I guess it's a valid concern as well. All right. This video is extended far too long. Check out the build in the link in the description. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for your time and audience. Peace out.